replacing black color with another color in Affinity Photo is pretty easy. In this video, I will show you the 5 best methods to change the black color to another color. And if that's not enough, I'll throw in 5 more methods. First, let's open up Affinity Photo. The first and probably the easiest method is by using a fill layer in Add Blend Mode. We can just add the fill layer and set the desired color and then change the blend mode of the fill layer to add. This works perfect if you have a pure black and white image. The add blend mode will always replace the black color and as white has the highest color value, it will not be affected at all. The second method is by using a gradient map adjustment. In a gradient map adjustment, we can remove the middle node and change the right node to white as we want to keep the white in the image. Finally, we can change the left node to the color we want to use for black. This method might be a better method compared to the first method if the secondary color is not white, as you can specify or force the second color. In the previous method, the second color could be modified by the Add Blend mode. The third method is by using the Recolor adjustment. Also, this method works best with blacks on a white background. In the recolor adjustment, we first need to set the lightness to 50%. Now we can use the hue slider to adjust the color and of course the saturation slider can also be used. A big disadvantage of this method is that you cannot really specify the exact color you want to use to replace the black. The fourth method is actually my preferred method and it just uses a fill layer with the color we want and then use the blend options to change the blend range for the underlaying layer. If we lower the right top node to the bottom right, the fill layer will only replace the darker areas below, which in fact are the blacks in the image. Because we are using the blend ranges here, the background or the secondary color does not really matter as it can be filtered out by the blend range. And actually, you probably should always change the blend range for the other methods too if the background color is not white, ensuring you're not changing the background color. The fifth method is by utilizing the Erase Blend Mode as a mask. We can again add a fill layer with the desired color. After we duplicate the original image and move this as a child to the fill layer, we can change the blend mode of this layer to Erase. To have it act as a mask, we need to change the blend range of the image. We can now ignore the blacks in this layer by lowering the left top node in the source layer, allowing the red layer to show through on the blacks, effectively replacing the black color. So these are the top 5 methods to change the black color to another color, but there are many ways of achieving this. In the last method, we use the image in Erase Blend Mode to create a mask, but there are many other ways to create a mask. For example, we can select the shadows from the Tonal Range Selection menu. Once we have the selection, we can now create a mask for a fill layer. Or, we can just use the Select Sample Color option from the Select menu. We can sample the black color from the original layer and press Apply to make a selection. While the selection is active, we can add a fill layer and as you see, the fill layer will now only fill the black color. An honorable mention is using the Selective Color Adjustment. From the Selective Color dialog, make sure to select the blacks. By adjusting the yellow, magenta and the cyan sliders, we can change the color of the black color. With this method, it will be quite cumbersome to get an exact color to replace black. If you don't care about the exact color and the background is white, you can also just use a Curves or Levels adjustment. In the adjustment, switch to a channel and then change the output black level to add color from the channel. In theory, you should be able to get any color you want by adjusting the color channels. It's of course not ideal. If you're really bored and want to get creative and don't want to use adjustments, here's what you can do. Create two duplicates of the original image and move them to the top. Apply the top duplicate in Contrast Negate Blend Mode, which basically inverts the image. Add a fill layer with your color and use the Darken Blend Mode. The white will be replaced with the color from the fill layer. Group these three layers and then set the blend mode of the group to Add. Basically, this is the same as the first method I showed earlier. Just being creative here, not effective. 
I probably can go on for hours on different methods, but I think you get the point here. Let's quickly check how these methods work on a regular black and white photo, which are a combination of various grayscales. The first method, a fill layer in add blend mode. The second method with a gradient map. Notice how the white stays white. The recolor method also works quite well. And the last method with the blend range, which in my opinion is the best replace color function. Whereas the previous methods are more in the category of recoloring. Let's quickly use the select color method and select the black from the image. With a tolerance we can control how much of the blacks we will be targeting. I can now go to the fill layer and apply the mask. Pretty cool. This method is also a very good way to create chromatic or gold looks. I can change the blend mode to something like contrast negate and change the fill color to gray and we get this chromatic look. Before I leave you, here's a quick tip you can use on a black and white image. Set the blend mode of a fill layer to soft light and then use the gradient tool on the fill layer. The gradient can go from dark mid gray to dark mid gray, which effectively makes the image a bit darker. But now add a node in the gradient for a point of interest, like in this case, right around the eye area. When we set this node color to light mid gray, it will brighten up the eye area, with as a result drawing the attention to the eye of the model. I used a linear gradient, but you can also apply the same logic with a radial gradient, which might look better in some cases. Hope you liked this video and thanks again for tuning in. Hit the like and subscribe buttons before you leave and see you soon in the next video.